Welcome everybody to another episode of Small Business Marketing Success Interview Series. I'm Small Business Stacy, your host, and today I have with me Lynn Elioff. There's many words that describe Lynn. She's a coach, an author, a lawyer, but I know Lynn from a personal side as well because she's in my coaching and mastermind group. And some words that definitely come to mind are smart, savvy, sexy. I mean, this girl has it going on. And I think you're going to find one word that describes her, which she has on her website. I love, Lynn, that you have this. I help women get what their hearts desire at the speed of badass. Hi, I'm small business Stacy. I'm Digital Dave. Where marketing meets technology. Yes. Now, who wouldn't want that, right? <laughs> absolutely. Stacy. thank you so much for having me on your show. I absolutely have loved uh, the friendship that we've had through this mastermind, and, and I love the work that you're doing. We're kind of on a similar path, right? Helping entrepreneurs build their businesses online. I think, I don't know, I think this is big, especially for women. I am so excited about female entrepreneurship in general. Absolutely. And there's so much we have to talk about today. I, you know, you sort of, you, you're a serial entrepreneur running multiple businesses. On the internet lawyer side, you have, let me make sure I say this right. Your company is coveryourassetsonline.com, yes. where yes. you're helping entrepreneurs stay out of legal hot water online. This is a biggie for the small business owners out there. And then your new venture, The Woman Up Project, teaching women how to build a successful and profitable business online. I am so glad you're here today to share everything, all your brilliance with my small business members. Thank you, Stacy. All right, well, I like to start my interviews with some fun questions because now that we know a little bit about the professional you, let's get to know the real you. <laughs> so a few, a few fun questions to start. Fruit or vegetables? What? My, my three or, well, <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Pick what, 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 which would you say? Fruit or vegetables? Oh, fruit or vegetables? Um, oh, probably vegetables. Although I have such a sweet tooth, but I, I, I prefer vegetables. Good. Well, you're a healthy woman. Good to know. <laughs> and would you say fair or theme park? A uh, fair or theme park? Wow, what a great question. I am not really good with crowds in general. Um, I used to be like, so if I were, you know, 20 years ago, I would say theme park. <laughs> but I'm probably leaning more towards fair, especially if there are, um, you know, there's a lot of arts and crafts and things that people are creating. I love all that stuff. Well, there's also all the fried food. Maybe they have some fried vegetables for you. <laughs> yes. All right. And one more fun question. Fiction or nonfiction? Oh, my gosh. I can't remember the last time I read a fiction book. Everything's been nonfiction, and there are so many good ones coming out now. The new uh, Bill Clinton story and then uh, the, the FBI director's new book. I mean, uh, the former FBI director. Like, so I have them all stacked up, ready to go. But I've been reading a lot of business books. Um, they, they really keep me busy. I'm, I'm a voracious reader. I love to read. But you know what I've been doing lately is audio books. I have gotten into audiobooks so much because, you know, when my husband goes to sleep and I don't want to have the light on at night, I just listen to the books. They're awesome. I love to do that. Absolutely. And I'm finding them to become more and more popular because people do, they listen while they're driving and while they're working out. And my book just came out, Small Biz Marketing Made Easy. So the next thing I have to do is sort of record that so it becomes an audio book because people do want to sort of take it with them. Um, and, you know, this way there's two ways to get that great content. You're, I just love your book and I love that you have written a book. I think that's so important. But like me, like I have a book too and I haven't recorded it. So I have to do that. So thanks for that little Let's reminder. Let's take each other on. There you go. Yeah. 
All right, let's start talking about internet law. Because mm-hmm. small business owners, when it comes to their marketing, you know, they sort of throw up a website and they think that they're done. What does a small business owner need to know in this big, hairy thing called internet law? So here's the thing. When we go into business, we're so excited, right? It's like, oh my God, I got to start my own business. And there's all these cool things to do. And the last thing people want to do is all the legal stuff. It's like, oh, so not the sexy part of starting your own business online. And yet, I don't know of anything that's more important than that. I mean, this is serious stuff. And so people, and people will say to me, oh, you're just trying to scare me. And I'm like, do you say that to your dentist when he says you're on the verge of a root canal if you don't, you know, do these things to take care of your teeth? It's kind of the same thing. There are things you absolutely have to do as an online business owner, as an online responsible business owner, if you're going to take care of not only your business, but your personal assets, because people don't realize that if you have um, a sole proprietorship, you are the business, the business is you. And that means that whatever happens to the business is going to happen to you and your personal assets. You are so at risk. There are things you can do as a sole prop to take care and 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 um, protect your personal assets as well. Um, but these are the things you just need to be aware of. You don't want to mess around with this stuff. People get in legal hot water all the time because they they say things like, "Well, I I didn't know that." Well, of course we don't know what we don't know, and that's why. I, I have made it my mission as a lawyer who did not want to sit in a, you know, a great big fancy office and counting billable hours. I thought, I, I want to help entrepreneurs not have to hire a lawyer, which people think is a little bit strange, but I created all these DIY legal toolkits so that people don't have to hire a lawyer. There's so much you can do yourself, but you have to be responsible. You have to pay attention to this stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I can speak to the testament of it. You know, a lot of times we think, oh, a lawyer, I don't want to deal with it. You know, or you think like when you're setting up your business, yeah, I have to do my legal papers, but then I'm done. Well, let me tell you, this lady here was sued six times in one year. So this is serious stuff. And mine was not related to online marketing. This was when I had my stores and my coffee and smoothie business, which is a whole nother story. But you need to take this legal stuff seriously. Mm -hmm. So Lynn, could you share some examples of, you know, when it comes to online internet law, um, what kinds of things does a small owner need to, you know, make sure that they have in place to, quote unquote, protect their assets? So one of the first things, uh, like if we start right at the very beginning, choosing a business name. I cannot tell you how many people have chosen a business name that they think is so awesome and they go and buy a website or they put it up on their website, you know, or they, or they name their product something and it's already trademarked by someone else. So they don't do this research and they think, oh, well, if it's available as a domain name, then I must be okay. And you're not. So that's one thing. You want to be careful that you aren't infringing on someone else's trademark or copyright. Um, Next, you want, once you have your website up and running, you want to make sure that you have three important legal docs on that website. You must have them. One is a privacy policy that protects the people who come to your website and that's required by law. And you've probably heard of the GDPR, (laughs) Stacey, I mean, who hasn't, right? I mean, it's everywhere and privacy is becoming more and more um, an issue with people and with countries who want to protect the residents of their country. So the European Union has taken a huge step in that regard and entrepreneurs are paying attention, but then they want to put their head in the sand because it's like, I don't know what to do. So the privacy policy is something you do need to pay attention to. I make it super easy with this DIY um, template that I've created. And then the other two policies you um, or documents that you want on your website are terms and conditions and a disclaimer. Those two documents protect you. So the first one 
protects people who come and visit your website or buy your products and services, and the other two protect you. They're letting people know what the rules of engagement are, because it's your website, your playground, your rules, and then the disclaimer says, hey, I've got all this free content, but if you misuse it, that's not on me. So you're letting people know up front what their part of what they're responsible for, what you're offering them, and then all the rules. Like they can't just take your content and repost it somewhere. All of those things are covered in those two documents. So if you have those three documents at the very least on your website, you're, you're, that's a good start. That's awesome. So the nice thing is, is it's not completely overwhelming. And it sounds like you've put together a DIY kit where, you know, they don't have to retain this ridiculously expensive attorney to write it for them. You have a sort of they, a template perhaps that they can do it themselves. Well, yes, because if you were to go get a lawyer to do this, and you can, and some people prefer to have a lawyer do it, and I understand that too, but I, I will be the first one to tell you when you absolutely must hire a lawyer. Don't even try to do it yourself. And I say that for when you're registering a trademark, because that is a rabbit hole and a headache you don't want to do yourself. It's just not worth it. Um, and then if you're um, creating a partnership with somebody, and this is where people think, oh, I don't need a lawyer. I, the, I know, uh, I know Stacy. she and I, it will never be a problem. And then there are problems. There are horrible problems that arise that the partners could not have foreseen at the time. So you need a lawyer. At, uh, those are two examples when I would say, don't do it yourself. Hire a lawyer. On the other flip side, there are so many things you can do yourself. So I created, I had this, I, I do have a toolkit. It's called the DIY Legal Toolkit. That's like my great big kahuna, everything you need to know about the legal aspects of starting and running your online business. Everything is in there. It talks about, you know, how to set up a copyright. There's so many templates in there for um, client services agreement, disclaimer, all of that is in there. But then I created this mini toolkit, which has those three documents that I just described. All those documents are in the big toolkit, but if you just want to get you know, the bare minimum done, the DIY legal mini toolkit has those three documents and, and it walks you through how to do it. There's a template. All you do is fill in the blanks, take out what doesn't need to be there. If it doesn't apply to you, add what needs to be there. If it applies to you, it's all written out. It's, it's really, uh, I couldn't have made it any easier for you. I love it because, you know, the small business owner is time starved, and, but yet needs to have this in place. Right. Oh, and it doesn't have, it's it. not as scary as, as you think, at least the way I, I have it laid out for you. It's not legalese. It's not anything that we can't handle. And, you know, we're, we're card carrying adults. We can, <laughs> we can handle a little bit of this stuff and it's not overwhelming if you just kind of approach it in a way that is like, I am going to do this because this is what I need to do to protect myself, my family, my home. My, my kid's college fund, all of that is exposed when we don't uh, legal up and, and take, take steps to protect ourselves. Absolutely. I, I, they, small business owners need to have this protection in place. And one area where they may not even realize they're at risk, I have a client who's dealing with this now, is there's this thing called the internet and Google. And you go online and you're looking for some images. And so, you know, you go to the images tab of Google and there's all this free stuff there, right? So it's right. online, I can take it, right? And then they post it on their website and all of a sudden they get a, a letter with a cease and desist. Have, I, have you had um, this experience and talking to people? Oh my goodness. <laughs> I cannot tell you. <laughs> I keep saying this. How many times people have written to me and said, oh my God, Lynn, I just received this letter in the mail, a demand letter for um, one woman. Um, it was for thousands of dollars. Right. And, 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 then, and then there's some that just get a letter that says, you owe us $800 for the unauthorized <laughs> use of these images online. And when the number is low enough, people will just pay it. And I'm saying, 
don't do that because that's a scam. There are so many <laughs> ways that people have found to get uh, get through to the small business owner who thinks it's I'm too small, it can't happen to me. And yet there are ways that they will prey on the small business owner because uh, unlike the great big companies that have you know legal teams and a whole legal department, the small business owner is so incredibly exposed. And in the case of images, here's an example. Um, a woman doctor took her business online, had someone create a beautiful website for her. It was it was uh, it was perfect. You you go to the website and you think, oh, this is amazing. She gets a letter saying you owe us sixteen thousand dollars for the unauthorized use of images on your website. This was legit. These it, images were she did not have permission to use them, and it was a big name company that has stock photos. And what had happened was. Her web designer just got these images for her somehow, whatever, loaded them up. I don't know whether it was from Google or whatever, and loaded them onto her website. Boom. She's liable, and whoever did it for her is off the hook because it's the person who owns the website that's going to be responsible. How would she have known that, right? Yeah. So this, just because it's on Google... Or just because it says royalty free doesn't mean it's free. Royalty free just means that you pay for the license once and you can use it multiple times, but it doesn't mean it's free. And that's the mistake a lot of people make. And this is the this is what I'm trying to educate people about. It's like these are the little things that you're not aware of um, that can get us into. Sixteen thousand dollars yeah, worth of hot water, right? and it's a great point because you know you hire a third party to design a website, yep. or you know there's people who do content writing and publish blogs, whatever it is, right. and you think that you know because you're legally protected because you didn't do it, yep. um, but this whole area of internet law that is so not the case. You're so right. That's so true, Stacy. We again, it's we don't know what we don't know. So then, what do we do about that? We educate ourselves, and that's what I did with the big toolkit. It's like a, a huge resource of everything you need to know, and it's not like you know so overwhelming. It's actually kind of it, it's a it, it's a, I've written it in a way that makes it quite interesting. People will write back to me and say, this is so cool. I had no idea. This is actually really interesting. And I'm learning so much about, I, I would have had no idea. So I, I think you're right. People need to pay attention. They think it won't happen to them because it's a small business. Who's going to pay attention to me? And that's when we're really exposed. Well, that's why they need your cover your assets program. <laughs> <laughs> yes. There's one other area I want to get your comments on since um, this is a timely conversation. There's this four letter um, acronym called GDPR. Have you heard of it? Right. Well, that, uh, that's what I was saying with regards to the privacy policy, the GDPR or the General Data Protection Regulation that recently came out of the European Union. The deadline to have everything up and running was May 25th. Right. Um, of course, it's never too late. So if you haven't done this, um, it, you, you must um, if you're going to stay in business for the long haul. And what it is, it's, um, it really is a beefed up regulation regarding uh, privacy. And it's not just for your privacy policy on your website. It's any information that you collect that is considered personal, and that's defined in the regulation, any personal information that could identify the person uh, to whom that that information belongs. So it could be an email address. It, of course, it would be a name, <laughs> a name, an address, and a phone number. Those are obvious. But an email address, absolutely. An IP address, people are like, an IP address? Yes, if it's anything that can be traced to a particular person, then it is considered personal information and it must be protected. And what that requires of the small business owner is that you need to tell people what you're collecting, how you collect it, 
where you store it, how long you keep it, what if they want to change any incorrect information. There is a laundry list of things that you are required to provide the person who shares any kind of information like that with you. And it's not just a, it's not just in an opt-in form on your website. It's if you're at an event and you collect somebody's email and you take that and put that into your business system, then you are obligated um, to do all those things that I was saying, like let them know what you're going to do with it, how long you're going to keep it, are you going to share it with anyone, uh, what third parties are involved, all of those things. It's, it is huge. And it's not just for people doing business out of the European Union. It's, it applies to anyone in the United States, Canada, all the countries who have potential subscribers or uh, customers or clients in the European Union. So those residents must be protected. I'm so glad you said that because, you know, a lot of small business owners have said, oh, you know, I don't deal with the EU, I, you know, and they put their he head in the sand. But everybody, all small business owners really need to pay attention to this. Um, it, and it, leads, it, it circles back to what you said about the privacy. And I have a lot of clients who are now going through and cleaning up their databases. Yeah. And in some cases, just getting rid of old contact information where they don't know where it's come from or, you know, they, you, you have to have a, a process in place to, to protect that. And I think in this day of everything being online, this is going to be, privacy is going to become a much bigger conversation. Yeah, I think people are thinking, oh, I'll just wait for this to die down. Well, other countries like Canada, for example, other countries around the world are considering adopting the same type of policy. So this is not going away. So if you get it done now, you're good. <laughs> you're ahead of the game. But if you wait you, and you scramble or someone, you know, says you didn't, you know, you haven't protected my privacy, you have no recourse. I mean, oh, it's a nightmare. And the fees, um, that, or the fines rather, that, that could be assessed against businesses are huge. Huge. This is, we're not talking <laughs> a few dollars. This, this could be very costly. Absolutely. So all small business owners out there, take this internet's legal stuff to heart. Lynn is a great resource for you. I highly recommend her program, um, whether it's the three, pat, the, the three um, you know, must-haves, but certainly the whole thing, um, because this area of internet law is one that so many small business owners don't pay attention to, but can be the biggest sort of uh, nightmare. Yeah, yeah, um, <laughs> if something were to happen. Yeah. So let's transition to a more fun conversation. Okay. About your other business, the Woman Up Project. What is this all about? So I guess that is my main business. My umbrella business is um, the woman up project.com. And really uh, I like you um, empower entrepreneurs, um, mostly female entrepreneurs who work with me to set up their online businesses from scratch. And as you said, at the speed of badass, because people want to just get their businesses up and running. And I totally get that. And there are programs out there that are thousands of dollars to, you know, get you to do that when in fact there are some really you can get up and running get your shingle out there uh, quite quickly and you don't need everything you just need to have you know a little storefront your website um, and, and and you're up and running and then we build on that but I think CC female entrepreneurship is going to change the world and I know that sounds like a cliche and whatever but I think that things are changing for women drastically and it's not so much about breaking through the glass ceiling it's like forget the glass ceiling I'm gonna create my own business and how empowering is that? No, no job outside of your home that takes you away from your family and your children, no job is gonna give you that kind of freedom. So I think that's how women are finally going to be able to figure out how to have it all. Because until now, I, I never believed there is such a thing as having it all. Men can't even have it all. Women having it all, it just doesn't make sense because something's gotta give and it's usually your family, right? So I think this, 
is, is it? This is the answer for women. And you, you're seeing, you and I are both seeing how women are killing it online, creating businesses out of their things that matter to them, that they're excited and happy about and their home. I mean, I'm just, I love it. I, I love, I, you know, I hear these ideas all the time that, and it's, a, it's all about the story. I love the story of how some idea just comes into this full-fledged business. Mm. Are you sort of finding that, you know, it's women who are sort of, you know, coming out of college and want to start their own business? Or is it a, a stay-at-home mom who says, you know, I'm not going to go back into the workforce? Or is it a woman who sort of hit the corporate ceiling and says, you know, screw it, I'm going to start my own thing? Uh, it's all of that. And it's also the woman who has been in the workforce ha um, and quit to raise a family and now she and now they're grown and off to college and now she wants to do something but she doesn't want to go back into a nine to five situation and answer to someone else so this is an opportunity for that woman as well so you start and I have two uh, two college age kids who have decided to go the entrepreneurial route <laughs> and skip college wow. I mean two, my first two children went through college and it was expected and that's what you did and that's what I did and that and and then <laughs> you know my two younger girls are like mom we don't even know if that's going to get us anywhere and they've already started their own little businesses my youngest who's 20 is uh, has started her own VA business and she has clients and she's making money and kids and her friends who are still in college are struggling and some of them uh, have already graduated and they're at home doing nothing because they can't get a job. So, right. so all of those um, women of all ages, this is opening doors um, and sort of giving them opportunities to really, really design their future. I, I just love it. I, yeah. And how do you help them? Because I find like a lot of women can be a little bit cautious and they don't always have that self-confidence. So how, you know, mm. if somebody's thinking, I want to start a business, but I don't know, you know, like how, how do you best help them do that? So this is what I say, woman up. <laughs> yeah, woman, woman up. up, right? Because that's what the woman up project is all about. You want to start a business, you're going to have to woman up. You're going to have to do things that are brand new to you. And of course, you're not going to feel confident because you've never done this before. Confidence is overrated. You don't get confidence in, uh, until you've done something and you're good at it. And then you know you can do it and then you can put yourself out there very easily. But when you first start out, it's going to be uncomfortable. But here's the thing. And this is the hard part. This is the hardest message to get across to uh, especially younger women. The older they are, the, the more they get this. But the, the message is this. You have some big girl shoes to fill and they are your shoes. But we're wearing shoes that are too big for us because we're still in that mindset of thinking that um, we're going to disappoint someone or people will laugh or they'll think that we're crazy or why would a lawyer start her own business online? that kind of stuff and that was one for me it was like what kind of a lawyer doesn't do it that way <laughs> who starts her own online business in a virtual law office and trust me that one was a biggie for me i thought oh what will people think they're gonna think i'm nuts all of that thinking is just mind trash yeah. and that's what we have to get rid of because this is your life this is my life and once you're clear about how you want to live it then you have to be prepared to go through some fire. There will be sticks and stones and things like that, but it's not anything we can't handle. And my biggest thing, Stacy, for me personally, is I don't want to get to the end of my life and regret not having done anything. That's it. It's like, so I asked myself today when I'm, if I don't want to do something, it's like, am I going to regret not doing this? That's the, that is the litmus test. <laughs> yeah, I'll probably regret not doing it. Then that means I have to do it no matter how uncomfortable it makes me. You live once and you may as well live it to the fullest. Yes. And if exactly. you have a burning desire yep. where you have a product, a service, a solution, you know, can help others. 
you need to be a badass and get it out there and woman up, right? Absolutely. You owe that to yourself and you owe that to the little girl who's still in you that had dreams as big as the sun. Remember, we had those dreams when we were little. I'm going to be this. I'm going to do that. And then we don't do it. I think we are really letting her down. How do you, let me ask, does it need to be a woman who's just starting out or do you help people perhaps who tried it themselves, may have hit that wall and you know, just know that they need some help to get over the wall. So I work with a lot of coaches um, who are either just starting out and, you know, the sky's the limit, they're brainstorming, uh, you know, it's like a blank slate. Um, then I work with a lot of coaches who've been doing it for a while and they can't seem to get any traction because there's so much information out there. So they try this, then they try this, then they try this. And uh, I wrote a book called Gutsy Glorious Life Coach. And in that, get this, Stacy, I talk about the 46 steps that you have to take to get your business up and running. It's not five easy steps or 10 easy steps to starting. It's 46 steps. Do these steps. Just go one, then do number two. Then if you go out of order, fine, but get them all done and you will have a business. So a lot of people that I work with too have missed a lot of those steps. And I'm like, yeah. well, of course you're not making money. Of course you're not getting clients. Of course your list isn't growing. You missed a lot of these steps. So, and that's the fun part. It's like, oh, okay. You mean all I have to do is these things and then I'll, and it's kind of like, yes, you have to do it and, and, and put yourself out there. That's it. Take well, action, put yeah. yourself out there. And you, it sounds like you've simplified it. Women are really good at sort of checking things off of a list. Know. You know, <laughs> I'm all about checklists. Guidance, somebody yeah. to tell them what to do. And it sounds yeah. like your program helps them do that. Um, absolutely. And I am, I love checking things off checklists, <laughs> which is why I make checklists, little sub checklists, just so that I can just keep doing this. Even if it's a tiny little thing, I can it check it off. <laughs> Um, but at 46steps.com, there's a free checklist there with all 46 steps. If you go to 46steps.com, you can download it. It's free. And there are your steps. Follow them. I love it. I love it. Well, Lynn, you are doing so much. I mean, you are a mentor to me. All these businesses that you run, you have grown children who, two of them becoming entrepreneurs of their own. Share with us when it comes to marketing, because you're a small business owner, you know, what's working, what's working today when it comes to marketing a small business? I think that the number one thing that we need to do to market ourselves successfully online is get over ourselves <laughs> because I mean, you can try. I mean, there are so many ways to market yourself. You could write a book, you could do Facebook Live, you could get up on stage, all of those things. Find the thing that you love to do and then do it. That's the thing, Stacey. I'm sure you see this all the time. It's like, oh, I would love to speak on stage, I would love to be a speaker. Why are you speaking? Well, I don't know. I'm not sure. And then I die. I don't know how. And I want all this stuff. It's like <clears throat> cut through all that and become the woman who goes on stage. Become the woman who writes a book. It's kind of like, well, <clears throat> I want to lose 20 pounds. Why haven't you lost it? Well, it's so hard and it's whatever. And I don't know how she does it. And I'm like, I know how she does it. She is a woman who um, either loses weight or maintains her weight. Or it's a woman whose health really matters to her. Become that woman. Become a responsible businesswoman who builds a kick-ass business. Become that woman. Because you can't do it if you are the woman you are today who's not doing anything. You gotta become that woman.
Does that make sense? Yeah, and I resonate with what you say because this is what I see a lot of small business owners do, and I call it sort of spaghetti marketing, right? Where they're throwing a lot of things at the wall, hoping something will stick, right. and nothing sticks. And right. so then they go into what I call ant marketing, where they're just following what everyone else is mm. doing. They're following yep. the ants because the ants right. are all moving, you know, but nobody right. knows really where they're going. And when you're starting a small business and you're sort of feeling a little insecure, you, you want to follow these gurus, right? And the guru said I should write a blog and the guru said I right. should speak and the guru said I should do this. Right. But it's not like in your heart, like, you know, it's just not you. So right. pick one, maybe two things that you love, that you're great at, that you're passionate yep. and just build on that. Yep. Absolutely. You know, I, I don't, I don't tell people what to do. I don't tell women what they're supposed to do. Right. But once they start working with me and they tell me what they want to do, I will ride their butts until they get it done. Because I, I and I'm not keeping them accountable to me. I'm keeping them accountable to them. Somebody's got to stand up again for that little girl who wants that thing so badly. Well, I'm that woman. And eventually, the uh, when I see women do that, when they step up and they go, don't worry, Lynn, I got it. I did it. And they're checking things off. I'm like, yay. <laughs> I mean, that is just so rewarding. And, I, you know, one of the music to my ears is when, uh, a woman will say to me, because of you, I didn't give up. I just kept doing it. And I hated nice. it. We step of the way, but I did it anyway. And, and here I am. And I, I just love that. Love it. So yeah. how can people learn more about the Woman Up Project? So you can go to thewomanupproject.com and it's all right there. Um, and then also coveryourassetsonline.com. Don't forget the online part. Um, that, that gives you all the legal stuff. So those two aspects of, you know, starting up your business and then covering your assets online, those two websites will pretty much give you everything you need. Oh, wow, Lynn. So much great information today. Thank you for coming on with me and sharing and just sharing your wealth of knowledge with my small business community. Any last words of wisdom for them? Uh, uh, Stacy, thank you so much. I love what you do. I, I think my last words of wisdom would be hang out with women who lift you up. That's why, I mean, I think that's why we've kind of hit it off. It's like, right. I sense that you could, can lift me up. I can lift you up and together, you know, like we're not, we're not afraid of helping other women. That, that mentality has to go. I think that when you connect with women who light you up, I mean, that is really all you need. You'll figure out the rest. You will figure it out. But yeah, surround yourself with women like Stacy, and, and you're good to go. <laughs> And Lynn, I mean, exactly. So woman up, become a badass, get your online internet <laughs> privacy and all your policies in place, yep. and you're set to go. Yep, you are. Lynn, thanks for coming on today. Oh, you're so welcome. Thank you for having me, Stacy. Absolutely. Well, thanks everybody for tuning in. This is Small Business Stacy, your small biz marketing specialist, here to help you get your marketing done and help you become a small biz marketing whiz. See you next time. Bye-bye. This podcast was brought to you by Small Business Stacy, the small biz marketing specialist. Want to grow your business more in the next 30 days than you have in the past three months? Get your free marketing plan at smallbizmarketingspecialist.com. That's small, B-I-Z, marketingspecialist.com.